Welcome back. In this video, I will go over the theory for determining contact angles by the Wilhelmy method, as well as determining the critical surface tension using Zisman plot. Surface tension can be measured using partial immersion method or the Wilhelmy method using the Wilhelmy slide. The partial immersion method is a force method that measures the force that is required to maintain the position of solid that penetrates the fluid interface. For example, using the Wilhelmy slide shown here, we can do a force balance where the downward force is equal to the gravitational force downward, which is mg, minus the buoyancy force that the submerged part of the solid has, which is rho of the fluid times gravitational constant times the displaced volume, plus the surface tension force, which is the surface tension multiplied by the weather perimeter at the interline. This force balance assumes that the surface tension is uniform across the interface and the fluid fully wets out the solid, meaning that the contact angle is equal to zero. This force balance is general and can be applied to various geometry that is not limited to the Wilhelmy slide. It can also be applied to rods as long as we know the, its weather perimeter as well as the displaced volume. Using partial immersion method, we can determine the surface tension by solving for sigma, which is equal to the downward force minus the rotational force minus the buoyancy divided by the weather perimeter. Similarly, using the force method, we can also determine the contact angle if we relax the contact angle assumption, given we know that the surface tension the liquid. When liquid contacts solid, the contact angle is defined within the liquid phase. It can be zero degrees, which represents that the liquid wets out the entire solid surface, or the contact angle can be between zero and 90 degrees, representing partial wetting. If the contact angle is between 90 and 180 degrees, it is partial non-wetting, whereas the contact angle of 180 degrees represents total non-wetting, meaning that the liquid beats up and does not really contact the solid surface. Contact angle indicates how much the surface tension force is in the horizontal and vertical component. Therefore, in the original force balance, we add us the cosine of contact angle, or cosine theta, to the surface tension force, so that we only consider the contribution of surface tension force in the downward component. Thus, we can measure the downward force using electrical balance. We can measure the gravitational force as well as the buoyancy force. We're left with the surface tension force. In the surface tension force, it, we have perimeter, surface tension, and contact angle. If we know any two of those terms, we can solve for the other one. For example, if I know the perimeter and surface tension, I can calculate the contact angle. If I know the perimeter and contact angle, I can solve for surface tension, which is what we assume if we have cosine theta equals to 1, or it fully wets the surface, we can directly calculate the surface tension. Or if we know the wetting property, we know the contact angle as well as the surface tension, we can calculate the perimeter of a certain test sample. In this experiment, you will be using the surface tension force given two of the terms and solving for the other one. Because we can measure the contact angle between the solid surface and the liquid, we can therefore calculate some properties of the solid of interest. If we perform a horizontal force balance at equilibrium for partial wetting, partial non-wetting, as well as total non-wetting, you can see at the interline we have a contribution of surface tension between the solid and gas interface. We also have a surface tension contribution between the solid and liquid interface. We also have a contribution at the liquid and gas interface. If we only consider the horizontal components, then the rightward component, which is sigma of solid gas, will be equal to the leftward component, which is sigma solid and liquid plus the contribution of liquid and gas multiplied by the cosine of contact angle theta. 
if we rearrange to solve for cosine of theta, we have that the surface tension between the solid gas interface minus the surface tension of the solid liquid interface divided by the surface tension between the liquid gas interface. And this equation is called the Young's equation. Remember that we made the assumption that we only consider partial wetting to the total non-wetting cases, but we didn't consider wetting out case. That is because we are considering the force balance at equilibrium. But wetting out, the case of wetting out, it is an ongoing process where the liquid spontaneously spreads. There is no force balance to be performed. And such assumption can be translated to that this contact angle is between 0 and 180 degrees, not including 0. And the cosine of the contact angle is between 1 and negative 1, not including 1. Because of such assumption, the Young's equation usually applies itself on low energy surfaces, surfaces that does not wet out by most liquids, such as plastic and polymers. Mathematically, we can define low energy surfaces as a surface that which the surface tension between the solid gas interface with the solid liquid interface difference is smaller than the surface tension of the liquid gas interface. This means that the liquid surface tension is generally higher than the solid surface tension, and therefore the liquid does not wet out the solid. Similarly, we can define high energy surfaces, those surfaces that are wet out by most liquids, such as clean metals and mineral oxides. Mathematically, the surface tension of the surface component, solid component, is greater than the liquid component. If we substitute the definition of high energy surfaces into Young's equation, we will find out the numerator is greater than the denominator, meaning that the cosine of theta will be greater than 1. However, this is not physically possible because the domain of cosine theta is between 1 and negative 1. Therefore, the definition of high energy surface does not allow it to be applied to the Young's equation. This is because for high energy surfaces, the liquid has a contact angle of zero, so it is wetting out. So it has no equilibrium established and it keeps spontaneously spread itself across the surface. And therefore, the Young's equation does not apply because it's not based on a horizontal force balance. Therefore, in this experiment, we are mostly interested in low energy surfaces that only partially wets or partially non wet or totally does not wet solid surface, surface that are low energy. For low energy surfaces, we can look at their critical surface tension that is defined as the surface tension at or below which the solid can be totally wet out. To understand critical surface tension, we need to understand how we construct it originally. For a given solid, we will use several probe liquids of different surface tensions and measure the contact angle, theta, between the solid and the probe liquid. If we plot the surface tension of the probe liquid on the x-axis, and plot the contact angle of cosine theta on the y-axis, we'll observe that for a given solid, the relationship is linear. If we extrapolate the data, onto cosine theta equals to 1, what we'll get on the x-axis is the critical surface tension. Above the critical surface tension, the liquid partially wets on the surface, or partially non-wet or non-wet. However, below the critical surface tension, any liquid will wet out the surface because the surface tension of the liquid is not greater than the critical surface tension. So the critical surface tension marks the surface tension at which liquids can fully wet out the surface or partially wet out the surface. We can get this graph easily because we can measure the surface tension force. And if we, if we know the surface tension of the probe liquid, as well as the perimeter of the object that we're probing using the partial immersion method, we can solve for this 
contact angle cosine of theta. For example, Teflon has a critical surface tension of 19 micronewtons per meter, so it cannot be wet out by almost any liquid at the room temperature. For example, water has a surface tension of 72, whereas oil has a surface tension of 30, which is all greater than the critical surface tension of Teflon. Because of the non-wetting property of Teflon, Teflon is commonly used for non-wetting coating, for example, on the non-sticking pans in the kitchen. When constructing the Zisman plot, we need to keep some assumptions in mind. The liquid that we are using must not dissolve or swell the solid, or else the surface energy will change. The probe liquid also cannot interact specifically with solid, that is, there should be no hydrogen bonding or acid-base interactions. Also, the liquid vapor must not absorb onto the solid, or else there will be complications on forming a monolayer on the solid. If all of these assumptions are satisfied, then we can use probe liquid to determine the critical surface tension of a given solid using the Zisman plot method. All we need to do is to measure the contact angle between the probe liquid and the given solid. The force method or partial immersion method allows us to calculate the surface tension by knowing the downward component force using electrical balance, gravitational force, as well as the buoyancy. Because we know the surface tension force, we can calculate one of the properties if we're given the other two. For example, if we're given the surface tension of a probe liquid as well as the contact angle between them, we can measure the perimeter of a given solid. In this experiment, you will be measuring the perimeter of a Teflon rod using HMDS liquid, and this liquid is has a very low surface tension and will wet out almost all solid surfaces. And therefore, the cosine of theta will equal to 1 because theta, the contact angle, will be 0 due to fully wet out contact. If we are given the perimeter and the contact angle, we can measure the surface tension. And in this experiment, you will determine the surface tension of an unknown liquid using a clean platinum wire of a known perimeter. Because platinum is wet out by almost all liquids because it has high surface energy, the cosine theta is also known. Finally, if we're given the perimeter and the surface tension, we can calculate the contact angle between the solid and liquid In this experiment, we will determine the advancing and receding contact angle for a series of probe liquid interacting with the Teflon rod, prepare a Zisman plot to determine the critical surface tension of the Teflon surface. Because the Zisman plot is just measuring the contact angle given on probe liquid's surface tension. In this video, I introduced the theory for force method of partial immersion method, which allows us to determine perimeter, surface tension, or contact angle if we're given two of them. We can also use the contact angle measurement to determine the critical surface tension of a low energy solid by using the Zisman plot method.